welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. Or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Richard Diamond. The original air date is August the 9th, 1960, and this one is the Edna Wolf murder case. Listen, while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made with the Rexall Drug Company, like Bismarex, for example. This famous Rexall antacid often neutralizes excess acidity within one minute. What's more, the ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time it takes them to dissolve in the stomach, and that way, relief from acid indigestion is quick continuous and prolonged. Quality like that of Bismarex is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you another exciting half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Well, are you, Mr. Diamond? Oh, my goodness, yes. Come right in. My name is Wood. Well, unofficially, so is mine. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, no, no, my pleasure. You must get a dividend from the nylon companies. You tell if there was a shortage. I'm well stocked. Yeah. What can I do for you? Start by calling me Edna. Then what? I'd like you to follow my husband. As a detective or a replacement? I think he's been seeing another woman. Why? Have you been running around the house in a diving suit and swim pants? I've always tried to keep myself attractive for my husband, Mr. Diamond. Well, then if your husband is seeing another woman, Mrs. Wolf, it's got to be an optometrist assistant. Well, thank you. I think you and I are going to get along just fine. Well, now that we're all agreed, tell me some more about your husband. What makes you think there's another woman? Usual things. The way he's been acting. Business appointments every evening. Nothing else? He received a call late this afternoon. I listened in on the extension. It was a woman. She called the house? George was very unhappy about it. Warned her never to do it again. She gave a name? She said, this is Nancy. I must see you here tonight at 8 o'clock. Hmm. She didn't say where here was, did she? No, George seemed to understand. Probably her apartment. Probably. If he's seeing another woman, I want a divorce, Mr. Diamond. And you need grounds. Yes. A hundred a day in expenses, Mrs. Wolf. Edna. It's still a hundred a day in expenses. Here's two hundred. Hmm. I hope that's enough of a retainer. Oh, that'll keep me interested for quite a while. Now, uh, tell me, what does your husband do? Oh, I, I, I mean his business. He's in steel. How much in? Oh, very much. He's vice president of his company. What does he look like? Here's a picture of him. Hmm. Well, I'll start right away and see what I can find out for you, Mrs. Edna. Yeah. Well, look, after I found out just how unfair your husband's treating you, I might lend you my shoulder to cry on. And I'd just about have to call you Edna then, wouldn't I? By 7 o'clock, I was standing across the street from her house waiting for her wandering husband. By 7.30, a man stepped out on the sidewalk and hailed a cab. I recognized him from the photograph as George Wolfe. 
and I started the tale, following him east across town to an apartment house on 47th Street. By the time I got in the lobby, it was deserted. A list of names on the mailboxes showed the only girl named Nancy in the building was a Nancy Fowler. So I headed for her apartment. Her door was at the far end of the hall, and I was halfway to it when George Wolfe bounded out and ran right into me. Let me go. Take your hands off of me. You forgot to close the door. Get out of my way. What's the matter, friend? You look like you ran into a yard full of snakes. Will you get out of my way or must I use force? Well, use all you like, but I think you better go back and close the door. No, no. Yes, yes. Stop it. You can't do this to me. Well, I hope you aren't always this wrong. No, no. Please. Now get in the room. <laughs> oh, swell. No wonder you took off like that. I didn't kill her. I swear I didn't kill her. Nancy Fowler? Uh, yes, I guess so. You guess so? Well, this is Miss Fowler's apartment, but... I've never seen Nancy Fowler before in my life. There was the 38 revolver lying next to the dead girl, so I took out my own gun and covered Wolf while I called Lieutenant Levinson of Homicide to get right over. Wolf yelled, screamed, and pleaded, and even offered me a nice fat bribe. But we waited for Fatty Levinson and his squad of New York's finest. He finally arrived, but New York's finest was poorly represented. Hello, Shamus. In trouble again, huh? Walt, did you have to bring Otis? I promised he hasn't used the siren in four days. Who's this guy? George Wolfe. Caught him running out of the door. Well, Mr. Wolfe, what about it? I had nothing to do with it, but I'm not saying any more until I see my lawyer. He was crying all over the place before you got here, Walt. Claimed he got a call from a Nancy Fowler who asked him to come up here. That's the truth, Lieutenant. She said she had something important to tell me. Says he never even heard of Nancy Fowler before the call. That also is the truth. When I came to the apartment, I found her lying just as you see her. How'd you get in the door? She told me she'd leave it open for me to walk right in. Well, it came out the back, just below the shoulder blades, Lieutenant. You on the gun, Mr. Wolf? I refuse to answer any more questions. Okay, take him down to the car, Otis. Come on, you. Rick, just how did you happen to be in this building at this particular time? Well, I was hired by that guy's wife to tail him. He was supposed to be playing illegal footsies with a female named Nancy. The dead girl? Well, the wife just knew the first name was Nancy. The girl who's supposed to live here is named Nancy. Nancy Fowler. I've never seen her before. Maybe the dead girl is one and the same. Well, I'll get an identification and have the gun checked by ballistics. In the meantime, I'm going to give this apartment a good going over. Mind if I help? Now, what kind of an answer do you expect to that? You will anyway. He was so right. We started going over the apartment room by room. Closets, drawers, everything. In ten minutes, the coroner and the boys from the lab arrived. And in the bedroom, Walt found something. Take a look at this. Ah, jewelry box. Hey. Pretty expensive. Regal Jewelers. Very classy establishment. Has a card in the box. For my darling love, George. <laughs> and the guy said he never saw her before. If this is his handwriting, he's as good as strapped in the chair. Well, it looked as if my client, Mrs. Wolf, had a killer for a husband. But a couple of small items still worried me. So I left Walt and went downstairs to find the switchboard operator. Oh, are you with the police? I just left them, uh... Tell me, dear, do you keep a list of the calls that are made through the switchboard? Sure, it costs the tenants ten cents a call. May I see the list? Yeah, I guess so. Here, handsome. Gee, nobody's called me that since I had long blonde curls and a gold yo-yo. I looked over the list of telephone calls and found the ones made by Nancy Fowler during the past three or four days. The last call listed from her apartment had been made at 7.45 that evening to a familiar telephone number. The same number Mrs. Wolfe had given me when she left my office earlier. I left for the home of Mrs. Edna Wolfe. Yes? Oh, Mr. Diamond, you shouldn't come here. What if my husband... Your husband's spending the night out. What? In a cell, all alone. Oh, you'd better come in. Now, what in the world are you talking about? Well, it looks as if your husband killed a girl this evening. Oh, no. That's the way it looks. Oh, please, sit down, Mr. Diamond. Thanks. I uh, caught him running out of the girl's apartment, forced him back, and found the girl shot to death on the floor. Nancy Fowler? Yes, I think so. It was her apartment. The police are making identification now. Oh, it's just terrible. I wonder why he did it. Were you here in the house at 7.30 this evening? What? No, I was with a friend until about 8.30. Well, a call was made to your house from Nancy Fowler's apartment. She was charged for it, so the call was completed. But she probably talked to George. Your husband swears he didn't know the girl. Claims he got a phone call and she asked him to come right over. That she had something to tell him. He knew her all right. You remember, I told you I overheard them talking. Your uh, husband own a gun? Well, yes, I believe so. Hmm. You know what caliber? No. I don't know anything about guns. 
Uh, a bracelet was found in the dead girl's apartment. The card with it was signed, Love, George. Oh, it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? If it's his handwriting, it does. Well, I guess he deserves it, but I'll call our lawyer and see what can be done. I'll uh, keep in touch, Mrs. Wolf. I hope you will. Just because the case is finished. Well, there are still a few things that bother me, so I'll just kind of keep looking around until I'm satisfied. You mean you think maybe my husband didn't kill the girl? There's an awful lot of evidence that he did, but uh, there's still a motive to be found. You've got the grounds you wanted, so from here on in, anything I do for you or your husband will be on my own time. Anything you do for my husband, I'll be glad to pay for. Oh, well, now, that's, uh, that's real nice. Hmm. Well, I'll take a run down to the precinct and let you know what the lieutenant has found out. Good night, Mrs. Wolf. Still can't get used to Edna? It'll take a while. But you'd be in bed by now, Rick. My landlord short-sheeted me. What did you find out, Walt? The dead girl was Nancy Fowler. Mm, figured. And George Wolf did do the killing. His gun? Yeah, we checked the registration. His gun, his fingerprints on it, his handwriting on the note in the jewelry case. What does he say about the bracelet and the note? He bought it all right. We checked. Regal Jewelers. Says it was for his wife. You expect him to say something different? No. What's the motive? We'll find it. Probably another man. Here's the report on the dead girl, Lieutenant. Well, isn't it a little late for you, Otis? Why aren't you out flying around some belfry? He's picking on me again, Lieutenant. Maybe you'd like me to tell him about the time I caught you sleeping in the attic hanging by your toes. Oh, not you too, Lieutenant. Otis, I hear you've been picking up some extra money posing for Charles Adams. I don't have to take this. I know my rights, and I ain't no bad. Hmm. Here's something on the dead girl. She works at the Gilded Cage, a nightclub owned by Eddie Young. Eddie Young. Wow. There's a nice little fella. He'd set fire to his grandmother if he thought it was too cold in the room. We'll have a talk with him tomorrow. Well, I guess I, I better be going. Sure. See you later. Yeah, I could sure use some sleep. Yeah. And, uh, Rick, when you get over to Eddie Young's club, give him my best. Smarty. The gilded cage where Eddie Young ruled as proprietor and keeper for his flock of hard gorillas was only about six blocks away, so I decided to walk it. But like always, I start in one direction and end up getting sidetracked. Keep walking, Diamond. Don't mm. turn around. Uh, you caught me when I'm right in the mood. You turn around, I shoot you. What's the matter? Don't you want me to spot your Tony? Over to that car. Okay. Quit poking. Your muzzle's cold. You drive. I'll get in the back. Oh, I, uh, I forgot my glasses. Can't see three feet without them. Get in. But I have a restricted driver's license. You want it right here? I can wait. Where to? Just start driving and don't turn around. We headed east across town with a gun pointed at my neck. I tried to get a look at the guy in the rear vision mirror, but he was sitting too far to one side. I didn't know where we were headed, but I had a pretty good hunch why we were going there. Turn right. And take it a little slower. I don't want to have to shoot a cop. Well, if we're headed for the river, I've seen it. From the bottom? Don't you think we'd better stop at a bathhouse or something? I know a spot where you can go in, clothes and all. Okay. But if there's anything I hate, it's getting my money wet. Turn right again. We were headed for a cross street. I could only turn right or left. A big warehouse was dead ahead. I eased down on the gas and we picked up speed as we neared the intersection. As I started to make the turn, I stamped down on the gas hard and at the same time threw myself toward the floorboard. His gun went off so close to my ear, I felt like my head had split wide open. Then we hit the building. <laughs> You're listening to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, brought to you by the makers of Rexall drug products and your Rexall family druggist. And here he is. Last week, a customer said to me... I wish I knew some way to be sure I'm getting enough vitamins. Some way that's easy. Yes, and inexpensive, too. Well, ma'am, millions of people have found the easy way to do that. They take Rexall plenamins. Plenamins? 
Rexall's popular multivitamin capsule. Just two plenamins a day give you more than your minimum daily requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established. Well, you can't expect much more than that. Yet plenamins do give you more than that, for they also contain valuable liver concentrate and iron, plus other factors of the vitamin B complex. Say, they sound expensive. On the contrary, Rexall plenamins cost you only a few pennies per day. Ask for plenamins at Rexall drugstores everywhere, and remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. We had hit the building and pushed our way halfway through the brick wall. I was still on the floor and the motor had been shoved through the firewall and was jammed into the front seat where I had been sitting a minute before. My friend with a gun was stretched out over the top of the seat, his legs resting on the horn and his shoulders through the windshield. I sat up, rolled him off the horn. He was very dead. Before a crowd could collect, I climbed out and got to a phone, called Walt. Are you sure you're all right, Rick? Yeah, I can hear things better now. I just say the other guy's dead. Very, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I recognized him, too. Uh, Gus Winkler. Holy cow. You know who he's working for now? No. Eddie Young. Oh, that's it. Well, don't pick Young up, Walt. I... I know a few things I haven't told you about, and this almost puts a cinch on it. I, I, I want to talk to Young, and then I'll be down to see you. But if Young tried to have you killed... Oh, if he did, you can't prove it. Not yet, anyway. So sit tight, and when I get there, I'll show you how to catch a killer. Are uh, you going someplace, chump? Yeah. Right through that door, John. Uh, that's Mr. Young's office. Maybe he don't want to see you. Uh, maybe he don't. He's going to be disappointed. Uh, uh, you you ain't going in there, chum. I see. Everybody gets disappointed sooner or later, chum. Yeah, what... You... Aren't you in the wrong room? That's what your boy outside thought. I changed his mind. Are you sure you ain't looking for Bellevue, Shamus? You're kind of a mess. One of your boys, Gus Winkler, tried to give me swimming lessons. He can claim his body at the morgue. I don't know what you're talking about. Somebody else who works for you got killed tonight, too. Yeah? Who? Nancy Fowler. What? Oh, come on, Eddie. I couldn't stand it if you started crying. Who killed her? The police are holding a man named George Wolf. Know him? No, I don't know him, but Nancy's talked about him a couple of times. Hey, boss, that guy just... Forget it, Lou. Well, the boss, he... Forget it, will you? Go on, beat it. Okay. You know, Shamus Lou's a pretty big boy for you to go pushing around. He's liable to stay mad. So Nancy said she knew this George Wolf. That's right. Rich old guy, from the way she talked, she was taking him. Good. Where were you between 7 and 8 this evening? Right here in this office. I got witnesses. Oh, I'll bet you have. Okay, Eddie, I'll see you around. I left the office knowing how close I was to the whole answer and called Walt at the precinct. I told him to meet me up the block from the gilded cage, and ten minutes later, you pulled the squad car up to the curb, and I climbed in. You find out anything? Yeah, but I have to know one thing first. What time was Nancy Fowler killed? Garner's report puts it at 7.30. Well, that ties it. Now, would you mind telling me what it's all about? I'll do better than that, Walt. I'll show you. But we've got to wait until Eddie Young leaves the cafe and goes home. It was around 12.30, and we settled back to wait. And with an impatient cop sitting next to me, it wasn't easy. Around one in the morning, a boy brought Eddie Young's convertible up in front. We watched Eddie climb in. Okay, Walt, tell him. We stayed close, following Eddie Young across town until he pulled up in front of his apartment and turned into the basement garage. Give me five minutes, Walt. Then come on up to Young's apartment. Why can't I go now? Because what I'm about to do isn't quite legal. And I couldn't stand seeing you blush. Hold it, Eddie. Uh, hey, what's going on? One yell and I'll kill you. Uh, look, look. 
Simon. Come on, put away that gun, will you? What do you want? Let's go up to your apartment. But please believe me, Eddie. I'll do something bad if you get out of line. We rode the elevator up to Eddie's eighth floor apartment. I shoved him in the door ahead of me and then made sure there was no one else around to give me any trouble. All right, all right. What do you want? Pick up that phone. Okay, but take it easy. Well, who do you want me to call? This number and hurry. I'll tell you what to say. Okay, on that. I don't get this. Evergreen Street. What's the matter? Don't you like that number, Eddie? I don't even know the number. Well, then dial it quick. Okay. And when you get an answer, just say, this is Eddie. Get right over here. I got to see you. And I'll look Sharma. You look, Eddie. I'm going to hold this barrel right between your eyes so you can see it coming if you make a mistake. I won't make a mistake. Hello. This is Eddie. Yeah. Get right over here. I got to see you. I, I can't talk. Goodbye. Okay, now, will you take that gun away? You look a little worried. What have I got to be worried about? I don't know who I was talking to. Oh. That should be the law, Eddie. What is this, Diamond? I'm sorry, I can't show you right now. Good night, Eddie. Wait a minute, you... Come on in, Walt. You said five minutes. Holy smoke, what happened to him? I just put him to sleep. He'll stay that way for a while. Now, Rick, you've got to tell me what's going on. I told you I'd show you. Now, go on in the kitchen and see if you can find some ketchup. Catch him? Yeah, then bring it out here and pour it all over Young. Have you lost your mind? Walt, I want him to make I want him to make him look like he's bleeding. Now go find the ketchup, or I'll just have to cut his throat. Walt found the ketchup and under protest poured it over the unconscious Eddie Young. Then I made sure the door was unlocked and we went out in the hall to wait. Please, Rick, what is this? It's the same way Nancy Fowler killing was framed, only she was really killed. Right, elevator. Okay. I'll play along with it. Let's go, Walt. <coughs> all right, hold it, Miss Wolf. Oh, oh, Mr. Diamond, he's dead, he's dead. His head is all covered with blood. Why did you kill him? Kill him. I didn't kill him. I just got here. Who let you in? He told me the door would be open. I didn't know you knew Eddie Young. Well, I, well, yes, I know him. He's an old friend. Why? This is Lieutenant Levinson, Mrs. Wolf. He's the man who arrested your husband for the murder of Nancy Fowler. <sighs> Lieutenant, I swear I didn't kill Eddie. Looks bad, Mrs. Wolf. But I didn't. Why would I want to kill Eddie? Well, why would your husband want to kill Nancy Fowler? I don't know. What has that got to do with this? You told me you didn't know Nancy Fowler. I didn't. You know Eddie. Nancy worked for Eddie. Well, I didn't know it. I didn't know Eddie that well. You said a girl called your husband and said her name was Nancy. Yes, that's right. You told me you didn't know her last name, and yet when I came over and told you your husband had just killed a girl, you asked me if it was Nancy Fowler. <laughs> That's a lie. You said that Nancy phoned your husband that afternoon. She did, she did. I swear she did. And yet did. Nancy Fowler's hotel switchboard has no record of a call being made to your phone any time in the afternoon. They made a mistake. But at 7.45, a call was made from Nancy's apartment to your phone number. Then she must have called my husband again. According to the coroner's report, Nancy Fowler was dead at 7.30. Oh, Mrs. Wolf, I can swear your husband didn't go into that building until 8 o'clock. I was following him. Oh. Doesn't make any difference what Eddie did. Did Eddie kill the girl? Yes. I called my husband. I wanted to get a divorce. And his money at the same time. Eddie knew Nancy, so we decided she'd be the one. She let Eddie in. He made her call my husband. Then he shot her. And the gun and the bracelet. You just took them out of your husband's dresser drawer and planted them in Nancy's apartment? Yes. I found the bracelet in the drawer with a gun. I guess my husband was going to surprise me. Uh, Eddie. Eddie is moving. Oh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie, darling. Hey, what happened? You're hurt. You're bleeding. Bleeding? Stay still until we can call it. Wait a minute, will you? Hey, what is this stuff? It, this isn't blood. I'm covered with ketchup. Ketchup? Ketchup? Why, you dirty, no good. Uh, uh, uh. Eddie. I've been framed. Framed? They're all yours, Walt. Why? Good night, Mrs. Oh, I guess now is as good a time as any. Good night, Edna.
Yes. Helen? Hmm? It's Rick, honey. Oh, isn't that sweet? I was just dreaming. Rick, it's four in the morning. Where are you? Oh, I'm helping Walt close up the gilded cage. Helping Walt close up the what? The gilded cage. Nightclub. I hear music. Hmm. But and his accordion will love you. Are you drinking? Honey, I'm with the police force. <laughs> what was that? Well, that was Walt. He said, Rick. You stood me up this evening. Well, I'm going to make up for it, honey. Listen. Okay, A. One, two. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me want you. And all the time you knew it. I guess you always knew it. You made me happy sometimes. You made me glad. But there were times, dear, you made me feel so bad. You made me sigh for I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to tell you. I want some love that's true. Give me, give me, give me, give me what I cry for. You know you got the kind of kisses that I die for. You know you made me love you. That's enough, Abe. How was that, honey? Honey? Honey. Oh, well. She like it. Well, of course she did. She'll be dreaming about it for the rest of the night. Come on, Walt. Let's dance. <laughs> Once more, here's your Rexall family druggist. No faster acting aspirin made. That's Rexall aspirin. When taken with water, the five full grains of pure aspirin contained in every Rexall tablet are ready to go to work for you even before they reach your stomach. Next time you need aspirin, remember Rexall aspirin. There's no faster acting aspirin made. Ask for it at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Ted DeCorsia, Wilms Herbert, High Aberback, Stacey Harris, and Victor Perrin. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hiya, beautiful. Get lost, bristle puss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids, like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, to make girls care. Go stag.
Sarah Berner will delight you tomorrow with Sarah's Private Caper on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Uh, one thing I liked about this episode is this is probably the first episode where I really felt a sense of uh, and connection between Walt Levinson, as played by Ted DeCorsia, and uh, Diamond. It's different than the Ed Begley dynamic, but there was uh, a lot more fun in it. As... Uh, Walt solves the case by pouring ketchup all over a suspect. Ketchup is kind of the uh, fictional trope way of uh, falsifying uh, presence of blood. But I wonder if there would be other condoms that might be more effective. Particularly if you get the light right. Ketchup's never looked really blood-like uh, to me. Doesn't seem like quite the right shade of red. So as always, if there's any experts in this particular topic, love to hear from you. And I promise not to ask how you got the expertise. All right. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie. Then next Tuesday, Pat Novak for Hire returns. And then next Wednesday, join us back here for another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. 